Hi, I'm Dwayne Nickel. I'm a Senior Technology Evangelist for Adobe Systems. On this episode of Adobe Developer Connection, I'm going to show developers how to add some simple support for transformation gestures. The transformation gestures really come in handy when you start moving applications into the mobile space. Users will expect on some applications to be able to pinch to squeeze them tighter or to make them wider and zoom in on a certain type of application. And it's luckily very easy to support this using the Flash Builder 4.5 or even the Flash Builder 4.1 with the AR 2.5 SDK. So let's start coding, shall we? So in front of me I've got a simple application. This one has a declaration of a uh, color array of four colors and then a shape with an ellipse on it. Now the border container has an ID of MyBC. If we run it or take a look at it right now, it's actually just a collection of really ugly uh, uh, colors that I put together because after all I'm not a designer. And uh, this is something we want to add uh, transformation uh, gesture support for. So the first thing I'm going to do is add an event listener that listens for the transformation gestures. And this will be queued off the application uh, completing. So by convention, we'll just say this one will be called init. And then we'll go down and create a new script block inside of our uh, application area space. And we'll make the private function init. And this will now listen, so we'll use my BC, which is for my border container because I'm feeling really possessive today. Uh, now we're going to add the event listener. And the event listener is going to be a type of transformation. So there's a number of different gestures here we can do. There's a zoom, a swipe, a rotate, and a pan. You'll notice if you add all of them to some objects, you'll run into trouble. So one of the questions that comes up when you start adding complex transformation events is if you rotate a, a, a device or rotate part of an application, and then you go to pan it, should it pan on its new vertical horizontal axis, or it should pan on the old one? So these are questions developers have to figure out. So the one we're going to add is the uh, uh, transformation gesture event for the zoom and then we're going to give it a function on zoom that we'll call and we'll write that one right now. Now the on zoom one must take the transformation uh, gesture event so it accepts that as its one and only parameter and it's also going to return nothing. Okay, now we've created the onZoom function itself. I'm going to create a variable, a member variable called my sprite, and type it to sprite. Oops, so much for the code complete there. And we're going to actually grab the border container and treat it as a sprite. Now it's very easy to scale the sprite, so we can give a uh, my sprite scale x, uh, and we can use the simple math operators to take the event itself and cue it off the scale x of the event. Now one of the things that I've uh, learned and I love about Eclipse is being able to hold down the Alt and Command key to duplicate a line of code, which saves you a little bit of typing. So I'll do that, and I'm just going to save, change the x's to a y and save it. And at this point we can run it. Now you see as I use my keypad that the ellipse grows and shrinks. But there's a problem that this introduces. Now what would happen if a user actually shrank it like down to this size and got it to an area that was too small to then replace both fingers on to get it larger again. So there's certain times when you want to maybe place some logic in your application to control the zoom event and make sure that users don't make it too small. And you can do this by using the scale factor and make sure that a scale factor of one is used which is the 100% size of the application. So I'll go back and add this logic. So let's kill this program off and put in the simple logic um, in the form of a test. So we'll do it as an if else statement and we'll say if my sprite the scale y number and the value of which returns a number is greater than or equal to 1 
then you can go ahead and do the scale year and we'll put else and then down at the bottom we can say my sprite scale x equals one and again I'll just duplicate this line of code and we'll say scale y now here's a little trick you can do with your uh, functions if you're like me and you like all of your uh, coding to be nicely shaped. There's this great little uh, source uh, correct indentation feature in uh, the new Flash Builder 4. Now let's run this for our second time. So we can still make it uh, scale larger, but notice that when we scale it lower, that it can never scale, it bumps into that uh, hardness factor of a scale of one. So you're going to have to experiment with this on your own to figure out what works for your application logic, but this is just a simple demonstration of how you add transform gesture events to air applications for the mobile space. I'm Dwayne Nickel for Adobe Developer Connection. Peace, love, and may your code compile on the first try.